Thank you so much, Brandy. What about the music this morning? Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful music. Good to see Melinda Smith this morning. Amen. Amen. And you all pray for their son. It's good to see you too, Ben. I just, you know, it's, I don't want to leave you out. But pray for their boy, Ben and Sarah Kelhoffer, now Sarah Smith, um, as they uh, became one on Friday night. And um, so the newlyweds. Um, you pray for them. I know they greatly appreciate that. So good to see you guys this morning, and so good to see the visitors with us this morning. Pray that you are blessed um, by being with us this morning, and um, that you've come here expecting God. And, um, you know, I'm always reminded of the, the verse in the Old Testament that what, what the devil intended for bad, God intended for what? For good. And you know, and again, we look around in our world today, and we see Satan's winning a lot of battles, amen? But ultimately, who's going to win the war? Christ and us, his church, guys, we, we win. And again, just, just so I needed to reassure myself this week, I, I read the back of the book once again, just thinking maybe it changed from the last time I read it, right? We still win, you know, we're victorious, and, and again, that's what we, again, trust in and rely upon in these tough times, guys, is the fact that we are victorious. We are more than conquerors through Christ. You know what that means? We're not defeated. Anybody saved today? Can, can, I, can I just ask that? Are, are, you, are you saved today? Are you glad that you're saved today? Anybody thankful for the song, I'll Fly Away? You might want to take a laugh with me next time we sing that. Guys, that's good stuff. And again, one day, guys, all of this, and again, what a perfect song for Brandy to sing this morning. We're going to look back on this one day and say, listen, we didn't always understand what your plan and what your purpose was, Lord, through what we went through, but we trusted in your plan and your purpose. And, you, and again, your plans and your purpose are never for our bad. They're always for our good, guys. And again, let me ask you this, don't raise your hand, but how many of you have seen your life personally through all this that you have drawn closer to God through this? We have. Let me ask you this, how many since last Sunday have spent more time in prayer this week, you devoted yourself more to prayer this past week than ever before? How many would agree with this statement? Our nation is at a crossroads right now. And church, it is time to get on our knees before a holy, righteous God and cry out to him on behalf of the United States of America. Listen, my intention today is, I, listen, I, I don't care, and again, guys, this may sound harsh, I don't care what your political affiliation is. I really don't especially as believers in Christ, you know, the one thing that's heartbreaking to me, guys, is to see the disunity in the church through this. It should be bringing us together as the body of Christ instead of disunifying us. Is disunifying even a word? I don't know. It is now, yeah. Oh, we can just make up words now, and they become, we won't go there either. But guys, this is a time in, in, in history of Christianity as well as America that the church needs to be unified and guys I can't think of a better thing to unite the church than prayer because again as we look at the book of Acts and you study the book of Acts you see them time and time and time again coming together in one accord and of one mind and, and again they're always praying why do, you, why do you think the church in Acts prayed a lot number one they believed in prayer right and again this is where it all starts with guys again our faith is only as strong as the object of who our faith is in. When you walked into this building this morning, did you have faith that the walls weren't going to cave in? Why? You trusted in the architect and the builder of the building, right? How many are sitting in a pew right now? You have faith in that manufacturer and builder of that pew, correct? You believe that when you sat down that the pew was going to hold us up. And by the way, when you sat down, you didn't look underneath to see if the legs were there, if there was any cracks or anything. Why? Why? Again, because your faith was in the fact that when I sit down, that this pew's going to hold me up. 
Guys, when we, when we pray, <laughs> please get this. Guys, when we pray, we have to understand, guys, that the object of our faith in our prayer is none other than God himself. And that when we go to him in prayer, we know, we know, we know, we know that he hears us. But again, unfortunately, so many people in the church today, when they throw up their prayers, guys, there's no confidence in the fact that, okay, I'm going to throw this prayer up to God in hopes that he'll hear me. And by the way, guys, our, our prayer life greatly affects our relationship with Christ. And again, I'll use the illustration as, as husband and wife, as we did last week, guys. If you're not communicating with your spouse, how effective is that relationship going to be? Not very effective. So again, with that being said, when we don't communicate in prayer and reading of the Word each and every day of our lives, how do you think it's going to affect the relationship that we have with God? It's going to greatly affect it in a negative light, not in a positive light. So if you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of Matthew once again. Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew, number six, Matthew chapter number 6. Last week we talked about, again, devoting ourselves to prayer. And, and, and again, we're going to continue in this Life Essentials series, of, and we're going to focus on prayer for however long the Lord um, tells me to, to preach on prayer and it was funny because I was thinking about it this week, and I thought, man, Lord, if you want me to preach 52 weeks this, week, this year on prayer, then I'll preach 52 weeks on prayer. That's how important I believe prayer is to the church today and how needed prayer is in the church today. Guys, prayer changes lives. And, and by the way, guys, prayer gets to the heart of God, and it moves the heart of God. What do you mean by that? When you pray for somebody to be saved and then you see them, do you think that touches God's heart, number one? Because again, why did Jesus come? To seek and to save that which is lost. Do you think Jesus loves sinners? And church, let me remind you of that today. The world is acting the way that they act. Why? Because they're sinners. How many of you, maybe, again, you didn't act the way some people act, but you weren't righteous and holy before you got saved. Some of y'all looking at me all super spiritual like, man, I've always been a good person, pastor, and no, none of us are good, by the way. So again, what we're seeing in this world, guys, is the way that we used to act. Hopefully we're not still acting that way because, again, we've been transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we look at the, Ma the gospel of Matthew, and again, the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7 in, the, in, in Matthew, by the way, greatest sermon you'll ever read in your life is found in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. So again, that's your homework for next week. Just read the Sermon on the Mount and just let God just bless you and change you through, through, through that. But we come to chapter 6, verse number 11, just one verse, guys, but there's so much in one verse that, again, I think many times that, that we look at this and we just overlook it. What does verse number 11 say, guys? Give us this day, and this, that's important. Give us what? This day our, what's the next word? Daily bread, right? But how many of you, let me just ask you this, guys. How many of you are so focused on the future? Is there anything wrong with making plans? No, because when, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with, with planning. But again, the reality, especially in the world that we're living in today, guys, those plans can change. And what Jesus is reminding us that when we pray, we are to pray for today's provision. And so last week we talked about devoting ourselves to prayer and this week, again, just, just one, one point I want to make today as we think about prayer, we must trust in the one who we pray to. We must trust in the one that we pray to. Now, again, guys, if you, unless you've been under a rock, you, you've seen what's going on in this world this week, and and you saw the prayer of that congressman or whatever, and when he closed his prayer by amen and a woman, and 
And, and, and again, everybody just got infuriated by that. As well we should. But can I tell you the most disturbing thing about that prayer to me? Was that he prayed to other gods. It, it wasn't just, and this guy is a ordained Methodist pastor. Guys, that's the thing that disturbed me more than anything. Yeah, a, the a woman thing or a whatever it was. And so again, you know, they said that was a Hebrew word. So I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I did get out my Hebrew notes from Bible college and this, that, and the other. And I couldn't find it with a search warrant. I looked in the Merriam Webster's dictionary, couldn't find the word. And uh, that's what I mean. It's like we can just make up words now and throw them out there and they become words. It's, it's not going to be a word at First Baptist Church of Trenton. Amen is a biblical word. Amen? Amen? All right. And that's it. Exclamation point. Don't add to. But guys, again, we're, we're, we're living in such a time where, again, people are worshiping false gods and other gods. And, and again, we get disturbed and bothered by, and by the way, guys, like I said, guys, we should be disturbed by what's going on. But here's the thing, and I mentioned this last week, guys. One of Satan's greatest tools that he uses is the tool of distraction. And if he can distract the church to focus on things like that, because here's what's happening, guys. The church in the United States of America is no longer making the main thing the main thing. Can I ask you this this morning? What is the main thing? Jesus. Keep Jesus the main thing, church. And, and but what better way can we do that than just going to him in prayer and trusting that when we do go to him, and again, God, the only thing that's going to change the United States of America is no matter who is in the doggone White House, that's not going to change it. The only thing that's going to change America, guys, is when God's people humble themselves, pray, seek the face of God, turn from our wicked ways, and then the promise that's attached to that verse— then will he hear from heaven and he will heal our land church we need healing today and the only way to see healing in the united states of america is for god's people to keep the main thing the main thing and get serious about prayer do we believe in prayer today that's 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 the bottom line church do we believe in it Because here's a reality, because if we don't, we're wasting our time. How many of you believe that you are saved today because of somebody else praying for you? Guys, one of my favorite stories I ever shared was the story of my grandmother. Godliest woman I ever saw in my life. Every day of this woman's life, she prayed for my grandfather's salvation. 50 plus years on her knees crying out to God begging God for the salvation of her husband people say did you did it, when, when your grandma passed away did you mourn I said no I rejoiced because my grandmother was ate up with Alzheimer's and I, that was not my grandmother I knew she was in glory amen but shortly after she went to glory, guess what happened? My grandfather gave his life to Christ. Yeah, my grandmother didn't get to see it here on earth, but boy, there was a glorious, woo, glorious reunion when my grandfather passed away. Because again, my grandmother got to see the results of 50 years of praying. And church, I believe this with all my heart, guys. I believe that one day when we get to heaven and we see people, and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember praying for that person. Or somebody's going to come up to us, guys, and I love to, to think like this, that you know what, I'm here because you prayed for me. You never gave up on me. My grandmother, again, my, my grandfather wasn't this wicked, ungodly man. He was just, he was a good man. He just didn't know Christ. But my grandmother never gave up. And church, again, now is not the time for the church of God to cower and give up. Now is the time to get excited about prayer, get excited about the things of God, and rise up through this time. Who believes our God is still mighty? 
And again, when, when, when Brandy was singing, and she, and she talked about him being our rock and, and our refuge, and, and he's our strength. That's who he is, church. And we can trust him today. We have to trust in the one. And by the way, and, I, and you've heard me say this many times, guys, and it just boggles my mind to no end. How many, and I don't want to sound critical, guys. I, I really, I really I don't. Let me ask you again. How many of you are saved today? How many of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you have eternal life? Listen to what you just said. So why is it <laughs> that we trust Him for our eternity but not our present? Man, I believe, I believe Jesus died for me. Listen, I believe He delivered me from hell and the wrath of God and, and I believe that I've got a home in heaven but you know what? I don't think I can trust Him with what's going on in America right now. <laughs> he saved me to the uttermost and, and listen he is the creator and sustainer of heaven and earth and, and I know that I'm in his hands and no man's able to pluck me from his hands I have everlasting life but listen I know that he's gone to prepare a place for me that where he is I may be also and, and I know we have gone to Shabbat that one day he's coming back and he's receiving us into his own but we trust him with all the future events, amen, as well as we should. Because how many of you have a home in heaven right now, amen? He's preparing it. But why is it we can't trust him with the present? And guys, again, when he makes that statement, give us this day, guys, he's, he's also reminding us, guys, Quit focusing on yesterday's bread and don't worry about tomorrow's bread. Because again, when you read on in, in verse number 34 in Matthew 6, as a matter of fact, let's just read it. Read it together, verse 34. Again, look what Jesus says. He says, Take therefore no thought for when. For the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. And then I love the end of it, guys, because we always skip that part. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Again, guys, Jesus is reminding us, guys, to trust him day by day by day by day. And guys, again, to trust him daily with, again, our daily bread. Now, I started thinking about this, and, and how many of you are bread lovers? Everybody loves bread. Now, let me just say this. When you're praying and you're asking God to meet your daily need, your, what you think your need is and what he knows what your need is may be completely different. But you know what happens when that happens, guys? We get all upset at God, don't we? We may be praying for white bread and God gives us rye bread or wheat bread. Or gluten-free bread or whatever and so what happens guys we get upset because again we need to understand this church he knows our needs better than we know our needs and he knows us better than we know ourselves so again when when we pray for God to meet our need and when he does meet the need guys don't get mad at him because again he knows what you need more than what you know but I asked God for this. But maybe God said, you know what? That's, that's good and all, but I've got something better for you. Aren't you glad that God loves us so much that he wants best for us? And when I say best for us, guys, I'm not saying that riches and fame and fortune. I'm talking about our daily need. But again, so many times what we do, guys, is we focus on yesterday or we focus on tomorrow. How many of you have jobs? How many of you all are thinking already about Monday and dreading Monday and this, that, and the other? 
what if Jesus comes back today? Wouldn't that be good? One of you would be excited. Wouldn't that be good, church, if he came back today? Because I can promise you this, heaven is nothing like what's here. There is no sin and no wickedness and ungodliness and so sorrow and tears and all of that stuff, guys. None of that is in heaven. And we have that to look forward to. Bread is the basic necessity of life. And again, bread is the symbol of all that is necessary for survival and for a full life. Guys, why do you think Jesus referred to himself as the bread of life? You know what he's reminding us? He is necessary for survival and he is necessary for a full life. Jesus said he came to give us life and to give it what, church? More abundantly. Aren't you thankful this morning, church, that Jesus doesn't just give us life, but he gives us abundant life if we'll just trust him. I love the abundant life. I love the fact, church, that I'm saved. I love the fact that I've got God's blessings on my life. I love the fact that I've got a great family and a great church. I love the fact that we live in a community church that lets us do the things that we get to do as a church. That's the abundant life. Again, church, we're not rich, except for Scott Onspock. He's the only one walking around with $100 bills in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> y'all pray for scott and barb didn't know he had that money in his pocket that used to be a she money but now she knows he has it but guys we have an abundant life and church like i like i like i posted and, and shared this with guys i mean i i can't tell you how burdened your pastor has been this week I've been burned to the point, guys, that I understand this. Number one, we need Jesus. And number two, we need one another. And you want proof that we need one another? Just study the New Testament and read all the one another commandments. It's hard to meet one another commandments speaking to a camera. It breaks my heart when I, when I see Jim and Bonnie Feitner and, and again, can't go visit them because of everything that's going on. And when, when, when I've got church members that have been in the hospital and can't go visit them in the hospital or nursing homes or even in their own homes, guys, because of everything that's going on. That is not your pastor. Your pastor likes being in those places. But I know this, guys, I've got a God that I can trust that when I pray to him, and again, does anybody in this room not believe for one single second that God cannot take care of the coronavirus? He can. But again, do we trust the fact that when we go and pray that he'll do it? Do we believe that, that God and God alone can save the vilest of all sinners? Do we believe, for, for, I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt, guys, that no matter what our basic necessary needs are, that God can meet them? Let me ask you this. How many of you have needs today? Everybody raise your hand because everybody here has got a need. Don't say you don't because you're lying. Yes, you do. And I don't mind calling you a liar because I have a need. I, we all have needs, guys. That's why I love when people say, oh, boy, I don't have any needs. Yes, you do. You just don't want to admit that you have a need. Hear me out, guys. No matter what your need is today, he can meet your need. Period. But you have to go to him by faith. Without faith, church, it is absolutely impossible to please God. And this is what that says to me, guys. When I get on my face before God and I cry out to him, I am going to him believing his will be done. Because when Jesus prayed, what did Jesus pray to his father? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So when you pray and you ask for your needs, say, you know what, Lord? Not my will, but thine be done. 
acknowledging the fact that you know that God knows what's best for you. And I don't know about anybody else, but man, I love the fact that he knows what's best for me. Because I think I know what's best for me, and it's never best for me. But he always knows what's best for me. I love what somebody said about bread or about the days. It says, yesterday is a canceled check. It's already been redeemed. Tomorrow is a promissory note. It may never be paid. Today is cash in hand. Spend it wisely. Give us this day our daily bread. Guys, when we pray and we trust God, we're saying, I am willing to accept the things you'll send into my life today. Again, you may not always like the bread that he sends. But again, trust the fact that he knows that's what you needed today. Samuel Chadwick said this, the one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. He fears nothing from prayerless studies, prayerless work, and prayerless religion. He laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but trembles when we pray. Woo! That'll make you shout. Listen to it again, church. The one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. Man, he's doing a good job. He fears nothing from prayerless studies, prayerless works, prayerless religion. He laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but absolutely trembles when we pray. Guys, you know what prayer is? It's we are no longer dependent on self. We are depending on the living God. We are humbling ourselves and acknowledging that we cannot do this. God, we need your help. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me. I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Is there anybody here today that truly believes for one single second that God has done working? Do we believe Jeremiah 33, 3? Call unto him, and he's done, he's given us a promise, church. Call unto me, I will, and again, by faith, trusting him and him alone. Call unto me, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Here's what I believe, church, about the United States of America. Great and mighty things are about to happen in the United States of America. There is a revival coming. There's going to be a rising up of the church. Trenton's about to get turned upside down on its ear. Because First Baptist Church is, is going to be the church. Amen? We're going to keep the main thing the main thing. We're going to pray and we're going to believe God. Amen? John 14, 13 and 14. Jesus said, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Matthew 21, 22, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Guys, last week I told you prayer is nothing more, nothing less than just asking. And you know what the answer to the prayer is? Receiving. No matter what the answer is. How many of you remember your childhood? Parts of it. You don't have to remember all of it. How many of you ever remember going to mom or dad and asking for something and they gave you that answer that you hated to hear? Everybody know what it is? No. You didn't like that answer, did you? And now you're a grown-up, and now you're a parent, and you're doing the same thing, right? Why do we say no to our children? Because we know what's good for them. We didn't understand that as children, right? Man, why did mom say no? But man, I really need this new bike. No, you wanted that new bike. You didn't need it. 
She was just protecting you from running it into a tree and causing greater harm to yourself. They knew what was better for us. And guys, it's no different with God. He may say no to what we ask him for. We have to accept the answer. Even if we don't like it. Because when Jesus said, if it be possible that this cup pass from me, what was God's answer? Jesus still went to the cross, did he not? He still suffered and, he, and, and went through all the anguish and the pain and suffering of the, the, the debt of sin. And again, he did it with joy. For the joy that was set before him, despising the cross, or again, bearing the shame. What was the shame, guys? The shame of, again, the penalty of sin. The cross and, and everything that came with the cross, the beating even before the cross. It was bitter. But Jesus did it anyway because it was the will of his father church we don't always like God's will am I the only one with that but can I just say this guys his will is always best guys let me share a story with you and I just thought this was just a beautiful story to go with go with today There's a story of, of a poor lady. And she stood at the window of a king's conservatory. And as she was looking in the window of that king's conservatory, she saw a cluster of grapes. And, and again, she longed to have uh, this cluster of grapes. She had a sick child at home. She went home to her spinning wheel. She earned half a crown, and she offered it to the gardener for the grapes. The gardener waved his hand and pretty much just shooed her away. So she returned to her cottage. She snatched the blanket from her bed. She pawned it and once more asked the gardener to sell her the grapes, offering him five shillings. He spoke furiously to her and was turning her away when the princess came in. She heard the passion, saw the woman's tears, and asked what was wrong. When the story was told, she said this, My dear woman, you have made a mistake. My father is not a merchant, but a king. His business is not to sell, but to give. So saying, she plucked the cluster from the vine and dropped it into the woman's apron. You see, guys, isn't it good to know that he's not a merchant? He's a king. And we don't have to pay for prayer requests. We don't have to buy things from God. We just have to believe that he's king and that he knows what's best for us. And we go to him daily and ask him to meet our daily needs. And then I love the fact that, you know what? Whatever your daily need is, what was that woman's need? She needed grapes for her child. So I say that to say this, guys. When you go to God, hold your apron open and just wait for God to drop the grapes in. Because that's what you needed for the day. Don't get so concerned with God didn't do this and God didn't do that. No, God did for you what was best for you that day. God did for us what was best for us. Give us this day our daily bread. Guys, God is good. He's gracious. He's loving. He's compassionate. He's caring. But right now, there's so many people, churches, Christians, that are wondering where is God. At the beginning of Brandy's song, what was the question? 
she said, you know what? I ask, where are you sometimes? He's not moved. He's not changed. Listen, guys, the same God that parted the Red Sea and caused the Israelite children to go over on dry land is the same God that will meet your daily need. The same God that spoke to Moses through a burning bush, amen, is the same God that meets your daily need. The same God that created the heavens and the earth is the same God that will meet your daily needs. The same God that saved you and snatched you out of the snare of the devil is the same God that will meet your daily need. But the question you need to ask yourself today, do you trust him? Do you trust him? Yeah, it's not always easy. It's not always easy to trust God. But it's always right. I'm going to ask the praise team to come up, and i got one more question I want to ask you today. Is there anybody in this building today Anybody who is watching me via the internet that would say, yeah, God's failed me. Nobody? You know why? Because he never has. And he never will. Because he's God. We'll fail one another. Mankind will fail us. Because you know why? That's who we're putting our trust in. But when you put your trust and confidence in God and God alone, guess what? You can mark it down. You can take it to the bank, church. He will never fail you. He will never fail me. Can you repeat this? Say, my God will never fail me. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Today, your greatest need is this. You may have came in here today and said, I have this need for this or I have this need for that. But all of mankind throughout human history, the greatest need any human being today has is this, is salvation. Your greatest need today is, is not where your next meal is going to come from. Your, your greatest need is not where you're going to go to work tomorrow. Your greatest need is not what kind of grades I'm going to get in school. None of those things are bad in and of themselves. But I want you to know today that your greatest need is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. When Jesus told Nicodemus she must be born again, he was, saying, he was letting Nicodemus know that the only way to eternal life is through Jesus. Church, the only way we can get to heaven is being born again. Is our life being transformed by the power of the gospel. Allowing the Holy Spirit of God to work in and through us. To come into our lives and change us, to transform us into the very image of Christ. And if you're sitting here this morning, and I'm not talking about sinless perfection, because we will never attain that this side of eternity. But you know what salvation is? It's humbling yourself before God and acknowledging your need for Him. Acknowledging that you cannot save yourself, that you need Jesus to save you today. Don't let pride get in your way this morning. Your pride is not worth spending eternity in a place called hell, separated from God. Your pride is not worth it. And right now, God knows your heart. I don't. God knew your spiritual condition when you walked in those doors, and He knows your spiritual condition even right now. I do not. But I do know this. If you're here this morning, you're not saved, God can change your life today, forever. I can't do that, this church can't do that, but Jesus can. 
And so if you're sitting here today, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. This is time for you to do business with God. But you have to acknowledge it, that you are a sinner. For all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. We fall short of God's glory because of our sin. And that separates us from a holy God. Romans 6.23 reminds us, for the wages of sin is death. Death means nothing more than separation. We know one day that these physical bodies are going to perish. But we also know that our souls will perish apart from Christ. Separation from God for all of eternity in a place called hell. That's the penalty for our sin. That's the wage. That's what we deserve. That's what we earn. And there's nothing we can do. There's no works we can do. There's nothing good enough in us. As Ephesians 2, 8, 9 reminds us, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You cannot work your way to God today. And the devil is convincing you today that you can work, that you're a good person, that you do this, that you do that. It'll never be good enough. But I'm thankful for Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm also thankful for, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then over in Romans chapter number 10, the great apostle Paul reminds us, it's with the heart man believeth, and it's with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you're sitting here today, just be honest with yourself and honest before God. You have never called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. Today is your opportunity to do that, to do just that. Would you say right now, in the quietness of this moment, Pastor Tim, I'm not saved. Would you please pray for me right now? Nobody's looking. Would you just slip up your hand right now? Pastor Tim, would you please pray for me? I am not saved. Anybody in this building right now, Pastor Tim, would you pray for me? I'm not saved. And then, child of God, how about you? Maybe you feel like, Pastor, I've asked and I've asked and I've asked and I've asked God, but I'm not hearing from him. You know, sometimes I think maybe we have heard from God and we just didn't like the answer, so we ignored it. Or maybe like my grandmother, 50 years of praying. And listen, I know some people say, Pastor, I don't have 50 years. Yeah, you may, we may not, but we have today. So I say that to say this, whatever you're praying for, whoever you're praying for, whatever the situation may be, keep praying. Whatever your need is today, ask God for it. Whatever your great need is in your life right now, don't just go to God. Go to God in faith, believing that He's going to answer you according to His will. And listen, if you need to come to these altars today and just pray for somebody, pray for yourself, or if I can pray for you, listen, you come. We're going to sing a couple verses of an invitation song today. Maybe God put somebody in your heart that needs to be saved today that you want to come and pray for. Or maybe you aren't saved. And you just want to come and get things right with God today. But whatever the need is this morning, you come. Father, we come to you humbled. Humbled by the fact that you love us in spite of us. Father, there are days in my life when I just reflect on myself and I question, God, how could you love somebody like me? Father, how could you save somebody like me? But Father, today I thank you that I am saved. I'm thankful that I am loved. I am thankful I am redeemed. I am thankful I am a conqueror. I am thankful I have everlasting life. 
And Father, for the child of God who may be here this morning, struggling, Father, I pray that they will leave this place today, number one, knowing who they are in Christ, but also, Lord, knowing that they've got a God they can trust. Father, increase our faith. Help us today to know that you are a God that hears and you are a God that answers. May the Holy Spirit of God move in this invitation. May your will be done today. May we pray again that you would give us today our daily bread. And we'll thank you and praise you for all these things in Jesus' name.